I'm speaking with the very versatile uh, Gary Scheiman, who has composed a wealth of scores for film and TV, uh, starting back in the early 80s, starting on shows like Magnum P.I. and The A-Team. Uh, in the past few years, Gary has found an amazing niche in the world of video game scoring, uh, including popular games like Destroy All Humans, Dante's Inferno, uh, Resistance, Retribution, and much more. Sure. He is also behind the stunning score for the Bioshock trilogy, uh, with Bioshock Infinite just being released. Thank you so much for uh, talking today, Gary. My pleasure. Happy to be here. So uh, to start off, I always like to ask composers, uh, why did you decide to follow the path, uh, the music path? Uh, what does music really mean to you personally, and what pushed you towards composing for uh, the visual mediums? Well, I think if you choose composing, it's you love music. There's something, uh, I mean, we, most people love music, probably, is my guess. But I think composers have a uh, peculiar joy in not only listening to music, but in making it. And a thrill, really, it is thrilling when you come up with something, you know, that your own creative uh, expression cre uh, generates. It, it's, it's exciting. It's really, and once you've experienced that, it's, you kind of don't want to do anything else. You know, it, it, it's a tough profession to make a living at. But it's it's really an exciting profession. Um, I I went to USC and I studied music composition, and I knew uh, you know I knew that you know the, the opportunities. I mean, I was studying orchestral composing, and that was what my interest was. It, it really was in orchestral music, <clears throat> uh, and uh, and so I knew that it, there were only two choices for a composer. Uh, really, you know, and that was either to, to teach at a university level, which I didn't want to do. Uh, ironically enough, I'm now teaching at USC one day a week uh, in the scoring for motion pictures and television program. But I didn't, I, it's not a full time gig at all. I go in for two hours a week and I'm done. Right. So I didn't want to teach. And then so I, uh, it really was sort of like, well, okay, the only other way I could actually write orchestral music and have it performed and and, and make a living and pay my bills is to write for, when I started out, film and TV. And then um, I sort of fell into um, the gaming opportunity in, the, in 2004. Right, right. Uh, so as a composer, what aspects of a project, be it, you know, whether it's a video game, film, or a TV show, what really drives your, your writing the most? Is it the story, the characters, the setting, visual aesthetics? I mean, it's always a combination, but really what speaks to you and affects you more than the rest? The deadline. <laughs> <laughs> Having to get the damn thing done. Uh, well, I don't know. I, you know, I really kind of like, uh, and I say this w with complete sincerity, I really like all of it. I, mm -hmm. I, I like the variety. If I, if I, if my job was to get up every morning and uh, do this exact same type of uh, cue, I mean, that, that, and composers who score long-running television series sometimes experience that, you know, they're, they're on a show for five, six, seven years, and it's kind of like Groundhog Day every day. You're kind of just cranking similar styles of music every day. Uh, for you know similar types of stories, um, so that that would be uh, that would be a good job in terms of making a living because you can make a lot of money that doing that. But it would be a very sort of it'd be painful after a while. I, you know, you'd probably find what you love about it. But but I really do like having uh, the variety of opportunities and and ch um, scoring challenges that different parts of the the game. I don't I don't know that I love any of it more than than another you know what i mean yeah yeah right of course so and now you're you know you're composing for film and television for a long time and then you started dabbling in video games uh which you've been really uh, focusing on lately what what's appealing about video games to you as a composer and what really made you want to to try it in the first place well there's a lot of cool things about scoring video games i mean the the kinds that i get asked to to work on which are these cinematic style games and that that want these uh these scores that are really interesting i mean the bioshock uh, trilogy has been fantastic from a creative standpoint really amazing stories really interesting music that they want uh, a lot of uh 
of um, innovation and, and uh, focus on doing something different and unique for those scores. So that's been really just amazing. Uh, it's just uh, the types of stuff, I, the music that I've been asked to write for video games has been some of the most interesting music I've ever been asked to write. And in addition to that, you know, uh, unless you're working on a fairly big movie, uh, the opportunity to work with a, an orchestra or live musicians and have those budgets available to you um, is rare. So it's sort of like it's it's uh, you really you have a, a decent budget, a production budget to produce the music with live players, and you also have these really unique uh, creative uh, opportunities. So it's really it's it's really pretty cool, I have to say. Um, I'm scoring a movie right now, as it turns out, and I'm enjoying that very much. But uh, video games, uh, particularly Bosch, the Bioshock stuff has been just great in terms of creative opportunity. And, and really, that's, that is, you know, to me, it, 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 all these years I've been in this in, in business of writing music for various visual media, shall we say, um, though sometimes I do write um, music not for visual media, just for, uh, I wrote a viola concerto, and that's going to get later this year. Um, but j most of my the music I write is, is you know, um, someone hires me, and I go to work, and I write the music for them. And so, um, so it's just, it's just you know, the, the video game is stuff that I've been asked to write has just been, it's been uniquely cool. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is. I, I love the Bioshock scores from the, from the first one all the way to, to now, and uh, it's true. I, I, when I talk to composers who do work in video games, they always say it's just a, it's very creatively freeing, and uh, you get to try things that you probably wouldn't be able to do on films and television. So that's really cool. Um, but so Bioshock Infinite was just released. I mean, it had amazing critical and public reception. Uh, this is your third outing in the world of Bioshock. Uh, how has the music evolved over the three games? Did you try to make them continuations of each other or have them exist on their own separately? Like, what, what was the, the whole arcing plan, if there was one? Yeah, I wish there were a plan. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me just say this. I, the first two games, the first game was a big challenge to find that sound uh, for right. rats, you know, and I, I think I found something that really worked really, really nicely for that. And then Bioshock 2 was in, in the same location, and they loved, it was actually a different developer. Uh, Irrational Games developed the original Bioshock, and then 2K Marin, under the creative guidance of Jordan Thomas, who had worked on the original Bioshock, but had been pulled out by 2K to start this new studio, and so they created Bioshock 2. And but they didn't want a radical shift in style. They, they, they and it did, it made sense to to continue the the style for Bioshock One because it's, the, the setting was the same. Although the music is completely unique and in some ways more sophisticated than the original Bioshock. You know, it, 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 it just I, I sort of had time to think about it and and refine that style a bit. Um, so I'm very happy and proud of both those scores. Uh, but then Bioshock Infinite was just a completely new and unique uh, game. It, 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 and I mean, it's I mean, without telling you, it's obvious. It's a new setting. It's a new location. That's, setting and location that that'd be the same. Uh, it's a new time, <laughs> 1912. It's uh, in the sky. You know, it's fresh air. It's just so different. And uh, so it just screamed for a completely fresh approach. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, Ken Levine wanted, wanted something unique and different, and I did as well. So it, 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 it's a simpler score in some respects, and uh, it has this sort of Americana vibe to it. Um, so really, it really was ripe for a new approach, and I think that's what, it, what I gave it. No, absolutely, I agree too, and I think it's, I mean, it, just at the simple, it's, like, it's beautiful in its simplicity, and every time you know the music comes in, I mean, it, it gives me like the, the goosebumps and the chills. I love it. So it's, you did such a great job. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so working on something like Bioshock Infinite, where of course they're going to come back to you for the score, and so how early in the process did you get involved, and at what point do you begin writing music, you know, on a video game? Does it work kind of like an animated film, or I mean, how does that work? 
they brought me in fairly early, in, in, in a way similar to an animated film. I don't know exactly when, but a lot of the the, the the good thing about that is it gives you lots of time to think about it. But the bad time, bad thing about that is it gives you a lot of time to think about it. <laughs> so um, it, it it really is funny because I had all that time, but it's really the music came together when the game came together, which was really that last eight or nine months. I mean, it, it had been coming together, but it was, it's remarkable. I was like nervous. I, I was like, I kept talking to Jim Bonnie, go, well, they, they're just finishing the first level. And they go, they've been working on it for years. You know? right. yeah. and I, holy crap, they're not going to finish this game. <laughs> um, but they did, of course. And, um, and it was really at, at the end there, that last six or seven months where I was having multiple recording sessions and uh, with these small string ensembles that <clears throat> the game came together and then they and usually the uh, a developer n will know what music they want it may change it they may add things but you it's it's not unusual for them to give you an asset list of cues music cues that they want uh, when you start working but it really I, they kept discovering new needs for music right up to the very last week or two that I worked on the on the game and stuff was coming in at the last minute so it was really <clears throat> it was really that last period where the music came together and um, and I, I really knew I knew what they really wanted and so um, so it, I, though I was on the game for like a couple of years it was the last six months that were the more most intense Wow so so there's not really like a spot I mean it doesn't work like a film where there's a spotting session so do you I mean do you do you see like the builds of the levels and do you kind of play through them like void of any sound or music or do you just kind of go based on maybe sketches or, or gameplay or, ga or descriptions to uh, to get the feel of what the music and the structure should be They do not let the builds I live in LA the irrational games is in Boston mm -hmm. so I uh, do not. Uh, get to play the game. I went to Boston and met with everybody and, and was able to see it then, but that was still fairly early, um, so there wasn't much to play. <clears throat> so the reality is that I didn't really... The, the, the way they communicated what they wanted me to do was someone would play the game and they'd do a movie capture of that oh, game. Okay. And then they'd send me that and they go, this is where we want music. It should start about here and, and there. Or if it was combat, it might be, here's some here's this general sense and look and vibe of combat in this area, and we need a looping combat cue, mm -hmm. um, that sort of thing, you know. Okay. So, and also now Bioshock is also known for creating atmosphere with the use of uh, source music, uh, but I read in another interview actually that you have, you know, no idea what songs that they pick and and how they're going to be part of the landscape uh, when you write the score. Does, does knowing that there will be other music meshing with your score affect your writing at all, or do you look past that completely? Yeah, I'm not, I mean, no, because, I mean, like I say, they give me something and say, here's what we need music for, and then I'm starting to think about it. And unless I know I'm up against something in particular, um, then it's not... I, I don't need a reference to that. Some of the, I did know, I mean, I, the, Will the Circle Be Unbroken, I knew that that was going to be incorporated. But some of the other music, I had no idea, and really, the game came out. So, um, you know, it, it's, no, it's not particularly problematic, no. And I, I'm trying to think, I, it, it didn't, nothing, nothing, I don't recall any frustration, going, gosh, I wish I knew what they were going to do. Uh -huh. So, kind of looking back at all three games, uh, what was the most challenging aspect of working on them? Well, the cha the, the most challenging was one, and and three. You know, yeah. because uh, it was coming up with the unique approach. Once the once you find that key that sort of unlocks the style and direction for the score, you just you're just writing music, which is the fun part in a way, you know, and, and recording it and all that. But coming up with the, the, the design and, and the themes and the ideas, that's, that's the biggest challenge. Yeah. And, uh, and, and in your opinion, not just uh, with Bioshock, but all video games, what, what do you, in your opinion, what makes a great video game score? Well, I think it, you have to have a really good video game. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, if you think about movies too, it's like the best scores seem to accompany the best movies. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, there, there's certainly exceptions to that. There's some famous uh, famous scores by Bernard Herrmann that were on some fairly cheesy movies. You know, right, right. Um, but really, you know, they a really really fine video game or film or television show inspires inspires that and and also having creative partners ken levine is a very creative person and he really cares and you know i mean everyone everyone i work with cares they do but there's something that ken really cares on a very deep level he really it's like it's his soul is going out there in that game so you really you know it's he's hard to please and when you do please him it's very satisfying because you know he cares about every note and every everything that you do so you know uh, you, you, obviously though the thing that makes a good game is is uh, uh, creative partners uh, and really really interesting um, uh, games where where they want music to be really interesting, where the music has an opportunity. It's not just ambient. It's, it really has an opportunity to play a role, you know? Yeah, of course. So kind of to wrap up, I always like to, to ask composers this one question. Uh, if you had the opportunity to score any film ever made, uh, with no disrespect to the original composer, of course, which film would you choose? Which film? Would I choose? Yes. The problem is, is, is that the, the those films would have such great scores, you know. Like oh yeah, of course. But like, Shank Redemption is such a great film with such a great score by Tom Newman. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the Steven Spielberg movies. Uh, there's a few. There's some incredible ones, you know. Schindler's List, or or you know, going back to some of his, his sci-fi things, you know, like E.T. Uh -huh. They'd be great opportunities for a composer. My God. Yeah, yeah. Just and they have such great scores that you wouldn't want to touch them. You know, they're just like, <laughs> just like you'd be like sacrilegious to uh, to mess with them. Um, I'm trying to think of a of a film where. Um, you know, I I think it'd be really cool to score The Big Sleep. Oh wow, that's a great answer. Uh, yeah. that, that even though that does have a great score, I, I is it Max Steiner who wrote that score? I uh, think so. Um, I'm not positive, but it's, I think but, so. But I love that movie. It's such a great movie. I think it'd be fun to uh, to give it an updated uh, score. Well, that's a great answer. Well. <laughs> I don't think anyone has uh, picked that answer yet. So, but uh, Gary, thank you so much for your time. It's a, it was a great pleasure to, to talk with you, and uh, I always enjoy the music uh, that comes from you, and always will be looking forward to for what's to come. So, thanks so much. Thank you, Kai. My pleasure.